Hi guys, welcome to Petopoles underscore Radhika. So for the past two days, we have been seeing about uh, various cellular adaptations like hyperplasia and hypertrophy. So today we are going to see another form of cellular adaptation. Right. So before we be begin with the discussion, let me just put a short clinical scenario. A 40 year old male presented with history of heartburn. He was diagnosed to have GERD, that's gastroesophageal reflex disease. He's already a known case of GERD. On follow-up, the endoscopic biopsy showed the following. First, I'll show you the endoscopic picture alone. So this is the endoscopic appearance of the lower end of esophagus. So what you're seeing here, you have some salmon pink areas. Okay. So this is abnormal. Once the surgeon sees this picture or a gastroenterologist whoever does the endoscopy sees this picture a salmon colored area in the lower end of esophagus they usually biopsy. Why? Why is that so important? That's what is going to be the topic of discussion today. The biopsy picture I will show later. Now, why are they bothered about the salmon colored patch in the esophagus? Now, see here in this image, one half appears dry and the other half appears greener. So, there is change. Okay. So, the same tree has undergone some change. Right. So, you have a healthy part on one side and the drier part on the other side. So, one type has changed to the another form the leaves are here so it appears greener and we have something to do with this image so when your cell changes from one type to another type that we call it as a metaplasia and that's going to be the topic of discussion today meta means change plasia means growth so that's going to be the topic of discussion today so today we are going to discuss about metaplasia which means change in this type cell type from one differentiated form to the other form that is metaplasia and what is this metaplasia to do with this salmon colored patch in the esophagus the normal esophagus on endoscopy appears glossy and it will be pale light pink okay light color whereas when you see the barrets i showed you a salmon colored appearance a reddish appearance a salmon red appearance so whenever you see a salmon patch in the lower end of esophagus you have to think of barrets and it's important you biopsy it also right why do you need to biopsy and what histological change do you expect that's what we are going to see today so i told the patient had history of GERD. so you have your stomach right then you have this is the lower end of esophagus so normally the lower end of esophagus has got a valvular mechanism so that there is no reflex of acid into your esophagus. So your esophagus is lined by what type of epithelium? It's lined by a squamous epithelium. Squamous is a type of cell. You have different type of epithelium. You have squamous epithelium, columnar epithelium, ciliated columnar epithelium and various other types which you are learned in histology and anatomy so your esophagus is lined by squamous epithelium squamous cells are large cells they have a nucleus they have a pink cytoplasm abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm right so what happens because of the valvular action normally there is no damage to the esophagus it prevents the reflux of acid into the esophagus in GERD what happens this sphincter doesn't function properly so there is reflex of acid so imagine this is your lower end of esophagus you have your stomach your acid is going and causing some sort of irritation to your squamous epithelium here so what do you do if some person keeps on irritating you what happens you will change your behavior you will show some face or you will tell them something right likewise due to this acid reflex the squamous epithelium gets irritated and it changes to some other form to prevent or to withstand that sort of irritation that's what we call it a 
metaplasia so basically metaplasia is changed from one cell type to another cell type this can happen anywhere in your body in different parts when it happens in the esophagus lower end of esophagus that is very important in the lower end of esophagus your squamous epithelium becomes columnar so this we call it as a columnar metaplasia to withstand that acid reflux your squamous epithelium undergoes a change into a columnar type and this we call it as a columnar metaplasia this is called barrett's esophagus okay so this is called barrett's esophagus so i'll tell you why we are worried about barrett's esophagus and all so i hope so far it's clear metaplasia is changed from one differentiated cell type to another type it can happen in any cell in your body it can happen in the epithelial tissue it can happen in the mesenchymal tissue so one example is your lower end of esophagus where your squamous becomes columnar epithelium so it becomes like this your intestinal type of epithelium will be there with goblet cells okay so that we call it as a columnar metaplasia so this is what the biopsy is expected to show so here you have your squamous epithelium here you are having all these intestinal type epithelium so this is one is a goblet cell so this one is a goblet cell so all these light blue they are goblet cells okay so see here here you are seeing right so all these no all these are intestinal type glands and all these ones they are goblet cells like you are seeing here so this is the endoscopic appearance and this is the biopsy image so because of the reflux of acid your epithelium has undergone some change a metaplasia from squamous to columnar that's why it's appearing salmon red color and the biopsy is showing goblet cells with intestinal tract now it's sometimes very difficult to appreciate this metaplasia in the lower end of esophagus so what do i do if i'm not able to see in a hne stain HNE is hematoxylin and eosin stain one of the routine stain used in histopathology so i'll put up a video on special stains already there are few videos but you have some other special stains to highlight certain cells so if i want to highlight these goblet cells or this intestinal metaplasia i can use some other stain to highlight it what can i do so this go usually we have special stain for mucin mucin is produced by your goblet cells okay so mucin can be highlighted by a special stain called pas like periodic acid shift stain whereas when you take these goblet cells what happens you have different types of mucin neutral mucin and acidic mucin your goblet cells produces acidic mucin and you have a special stain for acidic mucin which is called alcyon blue so remember a for a acidic mucin alcyon blue and this especially for barrett esophagus what you do is you do a combination of alcyon blue and pas it's called alpas stain you combine alcyon blue and pas and do a special stain which is called alpas so which appreciates your acidic mucin which is produced by a goblet cells so all these blue ones no all these are highlighted goblet cells by your highlighted mucin which is produced by your cells which has undergone metaplasia and your alcyon blue stain appears like this right so this is about your barrett's esophagus okay so i hope you're clear about barrett's esophagus so likewise the same change can undergo in other parts of your body so here this is how a squamous cell appears and what are you seeing here here you have tall cells your columnar cells which has got something on the surface a cilia so you have a ciliated columnar epithelium which has undergone a squamous epithelium undergone a change to squamous epithelium so where does this happen so where do you have ciliated columnar cells your respiratory tract so what can irritate your respiratory tract anything can irritate your respiratory tract especially in smokers what happens 
this ciliated columnar epithelium undergoes metaplasia to squamous type this we call it as a squamous metaplasia right so previously we saw something called columnar metaplasia here we are discussing about squamous metaplasia your ciliated columnar epithelium or any other type becomes squamous we call it as a squamous metaplasia so your cilia is normally going to expel your dust or any other allergens once it's damaged what happens it becomes squamous the protective mechanism of your respiratory tract will be lost so if it's going to be persistent what happens now your respiratory tract has undergone metaplasia later what happens this can undergo something called dysplasia that's a disordered proliferation of cell which we'll discuss in other video and then eventually it can become a squamous cell carcinoma also that's why we are bothered about dysplasia so i was telling in barrett's esophagus you can get your squamous epithelium being converted to columnar type with goblet cells in that case you can get it adenocarcinoma of the lower end of esophagus so that's why we are bothered about all these metaplasia whereas in your respiratory tract it predisposes to your squamous cell carcinoma so these are the different types of metaplasia so other examples of squamous metaplasia you can get it in your cervix also or sometimes you have your pancreas okay you have your pancreas you have your pancreatic duct sometimes if there is any obstruction to the pancreatic duct so the epithelium which is present in the duct can undergo some change same thing can happen in your urinary tract so these are examples for squamous metaplasia whereas your barrett's esophagus is an example for columnar metaplasia so these all happens in the epithelium and this is about metaplasia it's chain in cell type from one type to another type so why does this happen it's due to reprogramming of your stem cells or your undifferentiated mesenchymal cells and i was talking about your barrett's esophagus which is columnar metaplasia and in your cervix and your respiratory tract you can have squamous metaplasia sometimes the same thing can happen in the connective tissue we call it connective tissue metaplasia so when it happens in the connective tissue you have a condition called myositis ossificans myo means muscle ossificans means bone so sometimes in the mesenchymal tissue your muscle or in soft tissue you can have formation of bone as seen here okay especially after trauma when they have this oil massage or native treatment you can have formation of bone inside the soft tissue your mesenchymal tissue or muscle so what happens this will restrict the movements so usually you are not supposed to get bone inside these structures so all these are occurring because of metaplasia so this condition myositis ossificans is an example for connective tissue metaplasia right so these are the different types of metaplasia and metaplasia if it's going to be persistent especially your epithelial metaplasia can transform to malignancy that's why we are worried about metaplasia so in the previous video we saw about hyperplasia and hypertrophy so you have a normal cell hyperplasia is increase in the number of cell hypertrophy is increase in the size of the cell whereas your metaplasia is changed from one type to another so we'll be seeing other forms of adaptation in the upcoming videos so i hope you're clear on the concept about metaplasia and metaplasia if it's going to be persistent or even hyperplasia if it's going to be persistent it can become dysplastic and it can turn into malignancy so we need to follow up the patient thank you